In this Maya tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the in-class exercise of making something in Maya that's more complicated than just a basic cube, unwrapping it, and then laying out the UVs with a texture image and a bump map image that conforms with that texture. There are many ways to do this. This is a simple way of learning how UVs work and some of the UV editing tools in Maya. For more complex objects, there are many different ways to UV unwrap something in Maya. But with this in-class exercise, you'll be able to UV unwrap a simple object, apply an image texture, and a bump map so you can get started working on your projects. For this example, I'm going to start with a cube. I'm going to click on the poly modeling shelf in Maya and select cube. I'll zoom in a little bit. This cube has six sides, and for the assignment we need, so I'll right click and go to face mode. Then I'll select a face, press W on my keyboard so I can move it. And if I hold shift, I can extrude that face. I'll press R to scale, scale from the center, press W, hold shift, extrude, then maybe extrude again, and then let's extrude straight up. So now we have an object that is more complicated than a cube. We'll go ahead and right click, go to object mode. Then in the top right, instead of the standard modeling workspace, we can click and go to UV editing. Here on the right hand side, we see the UV. Notice that it only has one, two, three, four, five, six sides because it's UV mapped to the default cube. One of the ways we could unwrap it is to right click, face mode, select everything over on the left hand side, and then create an automatic projection. This will do its best to lay out all the different pieces. And you can consider this done. You can then stitch different parts of this together if you want to have certain parts of the texture be seamless. This is a perfectly fine way to do this. Another option is to use auto seams. Once again, I'm in face mode. I'll select everything over on the left. Then I can create a camera based projection. Once you create a camera based projection in Maya, then you can select cut and sew auto seams. There are some different settings, but this will give you the minimum amount to be able to unwrap the shape. Then select everything, modify, unfold. This will have some distortion, but it is all unfolded in flat. This is particularly helpful if you're doing texture painting or 3D painting. Then click one more time, modify, layout. Then make sure everything is selected, click modify, layout. This will size it so it's in the UV space. This is plenty done, but if I click on this, you'll notice that the UVs are stretched a little bit and distorted. So while this will work, we want to probably have a better way of laying this out. Another way to lay this out in the UV workspace is to use the 3D cut and sew tool. So once again, I'll select everything, then I'll create a camera based projection. Then under the UV tools, I can click UV, 3D cut and sew UV tool. This allows us to click and drag. We need to right click, click edge, so we can select the UVs. If I double click, it will make a seam all along this edge and it stops right here. I can then double click over here and it'll create a seam. If I click this, then it'll show me where the UV shells are going to be created. So right now it is all one shell, but as I use the cut and sew tool, I can find out when I get a new UV shell. This now is a UV shell and I can see that over on this side. I'm going to turn off the checkerboard so it's not in the way. Then I can orbit around and decide where my seams are. This is a really great way that you can go around and dynamically click and change seams every time you make a cut and it can make a new seam, it shows up as a different color. So now you can see that I've unwrapped this. And in fact, I could even decide that I don't want this seam here. So I could press control and double click and that'll stitch that back together. Then I can orbit around and say, this is going to be the back of the object. And that could be the other place that I have my seam. But I think this is going to be a pretty good unfolding. If I wanted to not have a seam here, I could double click there, cut that seam, and then it's going to do its best to wrap around and have all the pieces. And then I could cut one more seam here if I just wanted to be able to lay that piece flatter. Then once again, go to component, face, exit the tool, select everything. Then we go modify, 
unfold, it will unfold everything and then modify layout. This will lay out everything on the UV workspace. Normally now you may chop this up a bit, align your UVs for easier texturing, but right now we're not concerned about that. We're just concerned about unwrapping. All of these techniques are fine. For the most part, when you're starting out, the easiest thing to do is just select everything, create, camera based, make sure everything is still selected, cut and sew, auto seams, modify, unfold, select everything, modify, layout, and you're done. Now we can go ahead and assign a texture. So I'm going to leave the UV workspace and go back to the modeling standard workspace. Right click, assign a new material. Let's just give it a blend. Then all the way over in the right hand side of the attribute editor, we'll see this blend. We could rename this blend if we wanted to. We could call it my material. For the color, if I click on this black and white checkerboard, I can then select file, click on the folder, it will go to the source. It will go to the source images folder of your project if you've properly set your project and I'll click shell texture. This is now wrapped around the object, but we don't see anything. We need to press six to be able to see that in the space. So now you can see that the shell texture is wrapping around the object. And if I orbit around, you can see that everything is wrapped around. This is part of the distortion you'll get with the auto seams. So if you get too much distortion for your particular application, you can go ahead and correct that. But for what we're seeing, this is okay in the front. It just depends on how your object is going to be viewed. Then to add a bump map, go all the way over to the right, click on my material, and then on bump mapping, click the black and white checkerboard, click file, then click this arrow right here, use the folder, and select the bump map. Once that's selected, you'll notice that you have a bump map on the texture. If we go back to the UV editing, we can see where this is, and you can decide which of the three UV editing techniques that you want to use. For example, we could select everything and then create automatic. This will lay out the UV shells, and depending on your texture, this could work really great. But if you notice, we want these edges to be stitched together. So what you can do is select edges, figure out which edge you want to be stitched together. It's this one right here. Then in cut and sew, we can click stitch together. That will stitch that together, but then you might have problems of the UV unwrapping. So it's always a balance between what you want to have shown in your model and what is less important. Usually you'll put the less important pieces on the back. There's much more to UV unwrapping and texturing, but this should get you started and give you enough information to model the object. The final thing to do to be able to complete this in-class exercise is to make a render. If we go back to general modeling standard, we can press three on our keyboard to see it in smooth mode. You can of course add more edge loops if you so choose. Then on the Arnold shelf, click Sky Dome so we can see a Sky Dome. Then create a camera, camera, and then we can look through the camera. In order to look through the camera, right click and select camera one. Then you're looking through the camera. So this is what you're going to see. If you want to actually see the composition, click right here. And now we can see what we're going to get in our render. Of course, I recommend adding a few more objects to this render. But you can now click, but now if you click Arnold render, it will render an image. If you want to change the scale of the render image, click on the gear icon, scroll down to the bottom, and then make sure you click 1920 by 1080. Then you can save your image from two different camera views and upload it for the assignment. Happy 3D modeling.